Hi, I'm Sona Therese Babu. I'm 17 years old. I'm in 11th grade right now. And this is a story that I wrote. Priya groggily opened her eyes, trying to make sense of the mess around her. There were bottles everywhere, and the cat was sleeping quite comfortably at her feet. The pounding in her head wasn't letting her piece her thoughts. All she felt inside of her was a growing sense of unease. Her husband was dead. Priya knew that she had turned to the alcohols in her in hope of comfort, but the whiskey had robbed her of her memories. The last two days were a blur. Not only had she been so out of it that she managed to lose a molar due to a very bad drunken fall, but she also couldn't recall anything but snippets of what had happened. The funeral pyre blazed and she could feel the sweat slowly forming on her body. She stood, too dumbstruck to move, as a relative she barely even knew came to give her condolences. She was conscious of the looks of pity that fell on her. The poor girl, the people around her whispered, to be a widow at such a young age. She shook her head again in an attempt to clear her mind. Something was wrong with her. Why hadn't the grief taken her like a storm? Why wasn't the agony coming down on her like the freezing blizzard? Why was she so calm? Why did she feel this way? What had happened? How did Rajiv die? Priya walked towards the kitchen counter with great languor as Biskers rubbed his feline figure against her legs. A smile crept up on her lips as she recalled just how she came to own the cat. Rajiv had bought Whiskers as a gift for their first wedding anniversary. He had spent the entire day playing with it. She remembered how happy she was living in that moment. Listen, I'm sorry about last night. It'll never happen again. I love you. Priya froze. Why had the incident suddenly come back to her? She instinctively touched her upper arm. It was obvious she was, he was drunk. Rajiv had just had a bad day at work had staggered in, oblivious to his surroundings. Priya instinctively ran up to him. He rewarded her generously for her concern. Preen shot up her left shoulder as Priya stared at the monster her husband had become. She, Priya pushed the memory away. She never would get a clear picture of what had happened recently if she was going to let the past haunt her. Raji was a good man, faithful to her for the 10 years they were married. The phone rang and Priya scrambled to answer it. Hey Priya, how are you holding up? The voice on the other end of the phone of the line inquired. Sunny, Priya exclaimed. Her best friend always did know when she needed him. Yeah, it's me. How are you feeling? Are you okay? Do you need anything? He asked, clearly worried about her well-being. I can't remember anything that happened, she whispered into the phone. Tell me. I need you to tell me what happened. Priya could almost see Sunny biting his lip as he contemplated what to do next. Priya, you don't remember anything at all, he questioned. Yeah, everything is such a blur. I got drunk yesterday and the last few days are completely blank. I don't even remember how. The phone, fen the phone fell from her hands. She <laughs> felt her heart stop as the image came back to her. His lifeless body lay on the hard concrete as blood pooled around him. His limbs were at awkward angles, a perversity to nature. His glazed eyes stared into nothing, ignorant of the growing crowd around him. His mouth opened as if to let one last scream before his soul took the voyage into the unknown. Priya shuddered. Her head was spinning. She needed to sit. Yet she blundered forward, desperate for answers. She could vaguely hear her friend calling out to her from the phone, his voice urgent and heavy. Priya, Priya, say something. Hey, listen to me. I'll be right over. Stay where you are. Sunny frantically spoke into the phone. She took no notice as she gripped the balcony railing. She felt the warm summer air against her skin as she looked down. It made her sick, picturing his body lying on the cold asphalt where children ran around excitedly free from the bonds of school. Children. What do you mean we can't have kids? How am I supposed to face my family now? Why did I even marry a worthless man like you? She screamed in anger. They had been trying for a child for years. Her husband, her life was supposed to be perfect. She had it all going for her. The perfect romance, the perfect marriage.
the perfect husband. She couldn't give it up all now. Priya shook her head again. Why was this coming back to her? Why were the cruel memories the one that resonated with her the most? They had worked it out, hadn't they? In fact, the adoption process was well into motion. Her dreams for the ideal family were finally taking shape. And what did it matter now? He was gone and she was all alone in the world. She loved him from the first day they had met. Wasn't that supposed to mean you forgave each other for their mistakes? They were a happy couple, straight from the moment they had gotten together in college. He was everything she ever wanted. Great looks, steady, compassionate. Her parents loved him. They were the it couple. So what if he lost control of himself once in a while? Or what if she lost her temper? They were in love. Priya can't make it to your party. I have an important meeting, Raji reasoned. You have to be there, or else I'll look out of place. How will people perceive us if you're not there at the damn party, Raji? I need you there, Priya protested. You don't even want me there. You just want to keep up appearances, Raji added curtly before he walked out the door. You don't need me, Priya. You need a husband that your friends envy. Was that so wrong, Priya wondered now. She wanted to be an idealist. She wanted her life to go just the way she planned it. She strived to be flawless. It was her way of life. Everything had to be impeccable, impeccable and pristine. She couldn't stand blemishes or dents that made her masterpiece look like less. She pushed, she pushed aside those thoughts. Rajiv never could stand her constant fretting. He always said it was too overwhelming. Have you been drinking again? Priya asked, petrified of what, he had, what had to come. She was worried about how, how often her husband turned to seek solace in a bottle. What's it to you? Rajiv growled. They had just had another meaningless argument. You can't keep getting drunk like this, Priya insisted. She was walking on thin ice and she knew it. Try and stop me, he smirked as he grabbed her arm. His grip was hard and she could feel the pain around her growing by the second. Rajiv, she whispered, hoping she could get some sense into the animal that her husband had become. She watched as his face contorted into a devilish grin. His coarse laugh filled the air as he threw her against the wall, oblivious of her pained cries. Rajiv had so much on his plate when things got a little bit too stressful. He used to drown his fears in some fine quality liquor. Priya sighed as she remembered how often he used to forget about coming home because he was too intoxicated at a pub somewhere. A thought struck Priya. What if Rajiv didn't slip and fall down the balcony like she initially thought? What if he couldn't take the stress anymore? What if he didn't fall but jump? Priya's eyes widened in horror. Horror. What if she was the reason? She fell to the floor, partly from shock and partly from horror. That couldn't be true. She refused to believe it. Raji wouldn't willingly leave her. He wouldn't willingly let her be the woman who had such an unhappy marriage that he escaped by ending his life. She feared if that was what people thought of her. No, he must have slipped. He had to have slipped. Her well-designed plan didn't have any room for that kind of error. Her unblemished image couldn't take that kind of dent. Priya opened the door, Sunny called, interrupting her train of thought. She turned towards the door, somewhat grateful at the distraction he provided for those brief minutes. Are you okay? He asked as he examined her body for signs of injury, to check if she was truly all right. No, I don't think so, Priya whispered. Sunny looked at the pitiable state his friend was in. He never approved of her relationship with Rajiv, especially after he heard Rajiv's first drunken episode. Their marriage was so toxic, with Priya constantly maintaining, maintaining a faultless image for the world to see, and Rajiv struggling to play the part of the devoted husband, exactly the way she wanted to. Yet they were drawn to each other, like an opium eater was drawn to drug. Despite knowing its ill effects, their weak points were but faults of the human condition. Sunny, do you know how he... how he... Priya's voice trembled as she asked the question. He, well, he fell from the balcony, Sunny replied as gently as possible, afraid that one wrong move could break his companion. He didn't do it on purpose, right? He didn't want to die, Priya's voice grew softer. No, the doctors confirmed that he must have slipped. There's no way he could have landed that way if he jumped by his free will. Do you really not remember anything? 
Priya was handling this way better than he expected. She always wanted to have complete control over every aspect of his life, of her life, twisting it to suit the world's perception of her. Just bits and pieces, Priya answered vaguely. She sighed as she sat down on the sofa. Her headache had just gotten worse. She stared at the neatly pressed white shirt Sunny was wearing, not, sure, not quite sure of what to do next. Raji would have stained that shirt so easily, she mused, and then it hit her. Rajiv opened the door to find his wife lying on the couch, waiting for him to return home. Priya smiled lightly as she got up and moved to greet him. Happy anniversary, darling. She, the words died on her tongue as, she, uh, as her eyes fell on the dark red lip, lipstick stains on her collar. What is this? Priya asked, desperately hoping for an explanation. Anything that did not confirm what she thought it was. Rajiv looked Priya straight in the eye. I've been seeing someone else, he declared. Priya was shocked, her perfect image, her idealistic marriage. This doesn't mean anything. We can, we can get back past this, she asserted. This was a setback and she wasn't going to allow, to ruin, allow it to ruin everything she worked so hard to build up. No, we cannot. Don't you get it? We're over. I am done with this marriage. I can't live with your incessant urge to control everything I do. Rajiv announced as he, light, as he lit a cigarette. He shot her a patronizing grin before he hotly walked towards the balcony. Priya stared at the, his back as the emotions roared inside of her. She wouldn't let this be the end. She couldn't let this be the end. She was the perfect wife and she worked so damn hard to earn that title. And Rajiv thought he could just take it away from her. No, she would work it out. Priya, Rajiv whispered as he as she walked up behind him, not bothering to turn around. She couldn't let him just walk out on her. She had to try. Oh, he wanted to leave her? He could be rid of her, all right, after she was rid of him first. Her hands found his back and she pushed, hard. The man was clearly taken by surprise. So surprised that he didn't even bother screaming as his body fell from the seventh floor all the way to the hard ground below. Sunny watched as a nearly smile spread over Priya's face and a look of pure lunacy creep up her eyes just for a minute before she covered her eyes and broke down in sobs. If she couldn't be the perfect wife, she could always be the perfect widow. Thank you.